Often I've asked myself about the pursuit, not only of the truth, but also about how to better myself and make sense of not just our micro reality, but also how we fit into and invite ourselves into the macro reality. I've asked myself questions like, what is progress? What have I learned about human potential? What are the glitches in the matrix? What is the resistance to change? Maybe you're also one that has bore witness to many failures in government and over abuse of power. But the government and a shy society are perpetuating an infrastructure built up around consumerism, control, secret agendas and massive profiteering. An infrastructure and agenda pushed by ghosts that do not present themselves but rather remain behind closed doors. Are they hiding something perhaps? Are they not proud of their work, I ask? Well, I guess it depends on their agenda, right? But well, one thing I see that is evident, and that is the product of their programming that is leading to the eroding of core human values. Values and ideals built up over time, like freedom, happiness, the best for one's family, a healthy education, good work ethics, health, exploration, having a voice and freedom of speech, political ideals, etc, etc. Values which, when left for others to decide or program, are very difficult to re-remember or re-emphasize. In other words, like freedom, one's values can and are being systematically eroded by acceptance of an inferior paradigm, which we are all consenting to through our collective silence. For example, how does one function at optimum levels of being in a world fundamentally hell-bent on concentrating on the efficiency of feeding a machine-like consumer-driven society, rather than contributing to one which exists to facilitate evolution of the self and the species beyond mere survival? One that not only encourages the pursuit of happiness and sense of well-being, but also understands the environment in which happiness and that sense of well-being can develop and become amplified and encouraged. It seems from a very early age we're taught to accept current ideologies and political systems and merge into or become assimilated into that system almost without question. Effectively doing what we are told to fit in. Well, what if such an inherited system is flagged as actually being a false ideology or a false way of being? Which, let's face it, is a realisation which is being voiced more and more in our times. Where is the outlet or emergency switch in place to effect swift and rapid change that can be introduced in order to create a more advanced race, both genetically and mentally? In fact, does such a change mechanism even exist? The problem, it seems, is that we're not taught zip about what progressive thought is and how to initiate and introduce rapid change to correct inferior processes, paradigms or systems of control. We're not encouraged to think about what the evolution of man should look like and what might happen if common evolutionary goals were put into place that reach the mindsets of the masses. In fact, come to think of it, there are no sociological goals except buy this, buy that, wear this, eat that. Sometimes I feel like saying, eat this. And we know, you know who to point to in that respect. Or do we? Maybe that's the problem. Who do we point the finger at? Plain and simply put, it seems we are not geared towards steering society in a much healthier direction. A direction where the best minds are free to work, experiment and contribute without hindrance or financial restraint. 
Unfortunately, in the absence of little or few progressive ideals and ideologies, the default switch acts almost like an autopilot in terms of its self-perpetuation and self-serving interests. Well, the default switch is consumerism. Ironically, as the name suggests, it consumes like a hun hungry, indiscriminate monster. It consumes mental astuteness. It consumes drive, purpose, instinct, and even forward thinking. It does not encourage the sensory awareness that is needed to think outside of the box and connect many branches of knowledge and experience. The result of this is that pockets and fields of thought are not being put into practice. The, the dire consequence of this, I'm sure, is directly related to our somewhat slow rate of human evolution. Of course, we have little as a frame of reference when it comes to comparing ourselves with other higher forms of consciousness. I mean, religion tries to have a stab of you know, at what's out there and describing that. But, but surely we can find these things out for ourselves. Surely an, in, an intelligent designer would be more impressed if indeed we did work it out for ourselves using our own God-given intelligence. Sure, there are stories of aliens, but have any really shown us the way and, and presented themselves to the masses in person? Our scientists look in meteors for proof of it, of intelligent life, you know. Maybe it's time for us to realize our collective intelligence will allow us to, to, to better answer that question by placing a re-emphasis on exploration, not of rocks, but of our universe. And also to better encourage the exploration of self and our own minds, which we should never be shy of exploring. By not pushing for a system which embraces experimental ideals based on sound principles geared towards the freedom to explore and advance the species, one inherently risks missing the very element or key to the evolution of the species. You know, Einstein once said um, the definition of madness is to, uh, to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. You know, we, we, we risk a continued substandard existence. This is, this is what's at risk. Progression should and could be about exploring all the options available and cherry picking the best ones with a view to achieving individual and group goals and improving the template of our reality. For all we know, life, and many have suggested this, that, 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 that life goes on. If this is truly the case with each incarnation, would we not want to inherit and exist in a constantly progressive and dynamic reality, whatever or wherever that may be? In fact, any, accepting anything less, even temporarily, would be backward and damaging to the, to the progression of both the self and society. It seems our current consumer-driven society is made up of ideologies created and, and propped up by money men who spoon-feed us their false agenda through constant advertising, manipulation and threat of hardship. And should you not adhere to or follow the work ethics of a company or boss you're selling your manpower to, then the consequences are that you may lose your job and have to sell your labours to an organisation with almost identical consumer-driven ethics. Again, accepting a fraction of your real worth to a company. Incidentally, for your information, your, your worth is nearly always worth hundreds, sometimes thousands of times more than, than your actual salary. We're taught that it's healthy to line the pockets of complete strangers that benefit more than yourself from your own labors. In short, it's a simple form of prostituting yourself against your will. 
Yet we're taught this at a very young age, we're taught to accept this. And to, to not comply has results in society sneering at you. Yes, it seems they've trained people to self-police and prop up an inferior, cold, corrupt and heartless system. You're literally being forced by circumstance and sociological bullying. Of course, most don't see this submission to what is essentially a master and slave type relationship. Those that benefit most from this relationship are those best at cracking the whip, i.e. upper management, who are best at telling you what to do to keep the machine spitting out as many units of stuff as possible. Stuff that maybe no one even needs at times. Half the battle in many ways is recognising when an ideology has reached its sell-by date, which I believe has happened in the Western world. We must wake up and re-evaluate our current sociological mindset as a matter of urgency, or else the bottom line is hell on earth, being passed down from generation to generation. So what are the dangers of inaction? Well, apart from what I've just mentioned and passing on a substandard way, a substandard way of existing, you know, onto our offspring, we're, we're literally losing out on a more fulfilling and happier lifestyle. One which may lead to not only evolution of the self and the species, but also in answering some very deep rooted questions that lie within us all.